lately I've been going through a lot of the pens that I'm really not happy with and, um, and giving them makeovers. This is one of them. The reason I'm not happy with it is because you see how the red is all along one side and the blue is against the burl, which is really disappointing because this was going to be a really fantastic pen otherwise. The idea was that the red and the blue would be mixed together. But somehow when I was casting the blank, I guess they just didn't mix like I wanted them to. And, um, well, at any rate, I, I'm just not happy with it. Uh, it's nice, okay, but it's not what I was going for. And I'm thinking, that, you know, I'd rather recover this pen kit and, um, and just give it a makeover. The reason I'm filming this particular disassembly is because this is a rollerball pen. Rollerball and fountain pens have the unique, um, what, what's the word? I don't know, problem. When it comes to disassembly, because the uh, plastic threads on the inside of the cap are delicate. And, uh, you know, if not disassembled properly, those would get damaged. What happened? This did line up. Anyway, it's coming apart anyway. So I decided to record this one and show you how I disassemble a pen. Now, notice I don't have the fancy disassembly kit. I also don't have the fancy, you know, pen press, you know, which are often one and the same, you know, pen presses which convert to disassembly presses, I guess you would call them. But at any rate, um, I do everything right here on my lathe. So if you have a lathe and a little uh, a uh, three-quarter inch HD, oh, let's see, let me show you this. Um, well, here's a short length of it. But this is three-quarter inch HDPE, which I just, you know, make these pieces kind of tapered so they fit in here. Real simple, you know, which, you know, you can make on your lathe. So, let me, for, oh, we don't need this one. That's for pressing pens together. We only need one back here. For disassembly, we only need the one. And the other thing is any piece of uh, metal or plastic pipe, PVC, anything that'll fit over there. Uh, this is a good length for me. It gives me plenty of space in here for stuff to drop in. And, um, and then the piece of rubber to grip the pen. And I use, here I want to show you both pliers that I keep on hand all the time. Notice the different widths. You know, this is the smaller pliers that I like to use. They're really handy. But when it comes to disassembling pens, or gripping pens in general, the only reason I would do that is for disassembly. Uh, these have, you see, these have uh, uh, about twice as wide of a surface as the smaller ones. And that's helpful. I, ideally, I would have those other kind of pliers that have the wide plate. There are pliers made specifically for disassembly, for disassembling pen kits, but I don't have that. And, um, and I, I don't really need it. This, this has always worked. So let's start with, uh, with the body of the pen. And what I want to do is, you see, if I just remove both, if I, if I just remove both the nib and the finial, what happens is the hole is the same on either side. So I can't push from one side or the other. It'll just, it just goes right through. Um, with, uh, when I don't have any intention of ever turning this into a fountain pen, then I, I like to 
drop a uh, bit of CA glue in and drop the spring in there. So that way, whenever I change the ink, which is almost never, <laughs> but when if I go to change the ink, I don't somehow accidentally lose that spring. Also, if I, you know, if somebody else ended up with this pen, if it got sold or if, it, if I gifted it to somebody, and they, as soon as they take the ink out and that spring drops out, and they don't know how the spring goes back in. So it's, I just put the spring in there permanently. But if I leave that in there, actually it, it would be okay, I guess, to leave that in there. My concern is that whatever I use to push would push on the spring, might go inside and push on the spring and, uh, and damage it, you know, crush that spring. So that's why I generally don't do it that way. What I do instead is I put the nib back on. And then I use something like say, you know, any sort of rod that fits through there to push the nib off. And sometimes it seems like a good solid hit. Sometimes, you know, it, it can like wedge into the nib and get stuck in it. And, uh, and then I have to fight to get it off. It seems like this one should be okay though. So I'm not going to take a chance on see crushing that spring. We don't want to do that. So I'm going to start here with this. And this is, you know, any metal rod that fits will work. It has to be loose enough. You don't want it to uh, crush the threads here. So you want it to fit loosely. So I just take my, this is a piece of hard rubber. It's what, about an eighth of an inch thick? It's hard rubber, I guess, you know, you can buy sheets of it, a sheet of it at the hardware store, most hardware stores for um, cheap, I think $12 for a square foot of it. So let's get this one dismantled first, disassembled. Now I, I squeeze pretty hard. Uh, let me let me go back here and just point this out. See, I grip I grip it right here where I know there is support where you know where the uh, fitting is pressed in. So I know there's extra support right there. So that's where I prefer to grip, to grab it. And at that point, I'm squeezing pretty hard. My hand is at the end of the pliers here. And so I'm getting a lot of, um, lot of leverage on the pliers. And thus a lot of pressure there. What I do is I'll watch right here and some are harder, some are more difficult than others. As soon as I see, as soon as I see it moving right there, not this, because that's just sliding because I'm not grabbing it enough. As soon as it's moved, there it goes. As soon as it moves right there, then I lighten up the pressure. I don't need that much pressure anymore. Once it starts moving, we're good. And I, I lighten up on the pressure so I don't so the tube doesn't crush as soon as that extra support is removed. So there's one end off and look what happened here. Oh, oh okay. It started to try to get stuck. Sometimes it does. I'm going to show you real quick what I do in that situation. Is I'll take uh, any pliers really. These are the jaw is too wide to grab this little rod. So this is where I'd go back to these pliers. And what I would do is just grab with these pliers. Then I'll take, needle nose works real well for this. I'll take the needle nose and not grab it, but just wrap it around and then like use that leverage to kind of push that off. And that, that just pops it off really well. But 
we didn't have to do that in this case. I just wanted to show you that. And now I want to make sure and get a, a, uh, any sort of a rod. I usually turn to my drill bits for this. If, uh, if you're fortunate enough, or smart enough, I should say, to have uh, acquired a set of, uh, what do you call them? Push rods? You know, they're just different rods, round rods, straight rods, designed just for pushing stuff. Um, if you have those, then great, that's the way to go. But I don't have those, so I turn to my drill bits, and I look for one. This looks about right. This is a uh, 11 30 seconds. It's a little kind of loose. But the point is, it's not going to push through this and damage those threads on the inside. So I feel safe with this one. Let's go with it. And same process. Let me get my pipe back on here. Grab with my pliers. I want to get way up at the end there. I'm holding the pliers at the end, that's where I have the most control and where I can get the most leverage. I don't grip it real tight if I don't have to. You know, it's, I give it a try and see, is it going to work? Okay, it's not moving. So, now I'm gripping pretty darn tight. Come on, move you. There it goes. I saw it just move a tiny bit. That's all I need to see, and I lighten up the pressure. And let it finish off. And then I just let the piece kind of drop in here and fall back here so I can hunt for it. And that's why we clean up after turning a pen. I just turned one uh, about an hour or so ago and uh, it was quite a mess. And I, I would have had to dig that out of shavings and dust. But okay, so the body is apart. Now, th this is the... Uh, the really important one. There's two issues with this actually. There's the plastic threads, which we want to be real careful about. But if you see down inside there, you see like the little button. I don't know if you can see it, but there's, let's see, is it going to zoom in? Okay, I'm just going to I can't see my viewer on the camera from where I'm standing. So I'm going to, you know, hopefully you saw it. But anyway, this particular style has a button pressed into the top. It comes from, it's factory pressed. I, you know, it's not, you know, the kit doesn't come with it separate that you press it in. It's already done. And um, actually, here's a little tip. Um, I will often knock that little button out and use it as a template to make a button of the same material and glue it carefully and cleanly glue it in there and that really makes a cool looking pen but anyway that's beside the point the thing is i don't want the drill bit or whatever i don't want the rod to press on that button and pop this out so what I do, I have all these uh, stray bushings that from early on when I started making pens, I didn't keep track of my bushings. And a lot of them are for actually really, you know, cheapo pens that I'll never make again. But, um, but anyway, so it's, I use the bushings for all kinds of stuff. And here's one case. See, I drop a bushing in there. This is uh, for an 8 millimeter pen. And I'll drop the bushing in there. Will it fit? Yeah, perfect. And so that way I'm pushing around that, um, around that little button in there. Let's see if the same bit, 
Yeah, that's nice. It fits nicely. It doesn't uh, press against those threads. And so now I can press the cap off, the finial. Again, grab. Oh, and um, I tend to keep the uh, pocket clip pointing outward, but I make sure that the that the rubber wraps around it. That way I'm that way I'm not going to scratch it by accident. And with this uh, black lacquer finish, they call it black chrome. It's not chrome. It's lacquer. But anyway, um, that way I don't scratch the black lacquer finish. I'm squeezing kind of hard, watching for movement right here. As soon as I see that movement, there it goes. I lighten up on the pressure. I'm holding just enough to keep it from sliding through. And there we go. My bushing and my finial. Oh, okay, look at it this uh this one, the button is actually recessed down. I would not have hit the button, but I didn't know that. Sometimes they're sticking out, and you can hit that button and just push it right out. And our pocket clip, nice and not scratched. Now here's the really vital thing. You see, well, this one obviously would push right through because I just went through this way. But let me find another bit now. First, let me retract that quill. I'm going to have to at any rate at some point. Here's the thing. I want a bit... I purposely grabbed this one because I know it's a little too small. I could see that. And notice it, you know, it's bigger than the first bit, but it's still, it's, it's not filling the space. And what can happen is, you know, that thin plastic, if it doesn't, like, uh, there's always a chance of damaging that, okay? The, the idea is to minimize that chance. And if this fits loose, that means that it could push on one, more on one side or the other and, uh, and cause that plastic to like crumple or collapse inside there. And then it's ruined. The, this pen kit is shot. So what I'm, what I'm looking for is something that will fit in there. Oh, that's, I grabbed it right away. That was not planned. Something that will fit in there, not tightly, because I don't want it to get stuck inside the tube, but just something that fills it as much as possible without being too tight. And this one does a really good job of it. So that way I know that that piece of plastic inside there, oh, that's pretty dirty in there. Doesn't matter anyway. Um, so I know that that piece of plastic in there is going to get the full amount of support all the way around. And that makes it far, far less likely that I'm going to damage it. So let's get it into the pliers again. Now see the plastic this this uh this much of it is actual metal and the plastic just goes further back. So I got it and this is the critical moment. Let's see how this does. Remember I'm watching this point here. I if this starts sliding, that means I'm not gripping it tight enough. So let's cross our fingers and see how this does. Arr, it's not moving. Ah, there we go. Okay, we still have to keep the pressure on. I lightened the pressure and the whole thing started to slide. So I still have to keep some pressure on. There, now it's, I'm 
not holding much pressure on it at all. And there we go. And you see, this assembly is complete. But I want to show you, this is the plastic that I'm, I'm referring to. Okay, it looks like I, no, I, I couldn't have just pushed it out because where it's loose here, it was actually pretty snug inside the, inside this. You see, it fits pretty snugly. So there's, the only way to get it out is what I just showed you. Um, so you see here, the bit was pressing all the way around, the full diameter. If I'd have used a smaller bit, well, this one, it's I'm, you know, obviously not going to use. But just for an example, if it's only pressing on, say, this, on half of it and not pressing all the way around, then there's a good chance that this could just crush or, or you know, damage it. So I wanted the, I wanted the, the full, um, the even pressure all the way around. I'm not good at describing it, but I think you get what I'm saying. And if you don't, maybe you shouldn't be making pens, or you shouldn't be disassembling them. <laughs> anyway, so there is our pen kit disassembled. This is uh, called Tack Black, and it's uh, you know, really one of my favorite pens, actually. So I'm glad I saved this kit. And what I'll do now is I'll take, I'll get the bushings and I'll put these back on and I'll just, you know, just turn the material off of this to, uh, to salvage the, the brass tubes. And a tip about that, by the way, I'm not going to do it right now, uh, but a tip about that is every time you do that, every time you disassemble a pen and remove the tube, you remove a little bit of the brass and then you scuff sand it. And each time you do that, it takes a little bit of the brass off. And it's just a thin brass tube. So after, you know, if I... If I disassemble and redo a pen a couple of times, that brass ends up that brass ends up being too thin to actually use. So you know it's it's only good for a, a couple of times. So ideally, you know, you make a pen once and you're happy with it. But just keep that in mind. If you go to disassemble a pen, redo it. And then disassemble it again to redo it again. That third time is probably the last time. 